Hey cutie. <laughs> As you can see, Sam has a button down and basketball shorts on. It's a trendy look. That's what he's kind of been doing every day recently. Life in the quarantine. Like I, <laughs> I love you. All Welcome back to Bam Vlogs. I'm Bailey. I'm Sam. And welcome to another episode of Sizzling with Sam. <laughs> we need to come up with a theme song. I think that would be funny. We do. Um, so today is my grandma's birthday and we are making some um, gluten-free pizza to bring as an appetizer. After much requests from there you guys There was a lot of comments. requests. And I'm uh, sorry it took a little bit longer. Um, life has been crazy, but it's well worth the wait. All right, so today, after much ado, we're going to be making my famous gluten-free pizza. It's, it's not so actually good. Mine. It's uh, the Caputo Fiore Glue Brands flour. Um, we are literally, I know you, if you guys saw our bread video, uh, I may have played around with the recipe a little bit that we did for the gluten-free bread, but for this, we are literally going to follow the directions exactly as I have them on the bag, so it makes it super easy and super simple. Cannot recommend this stuff enough. You have to go on Amazon, get yourself a couple bags. It's seriously, a lifesaver. So, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I've already pre-measured, pre-weighed out all of our ingredients. If you saw our bread video, you know that weighing out your ingredients is the only way to make sure that you get everything exactly right. Um, otherwise, you know, you could have little discrepancies here and there that could totally alter the outcome of your baking goods. So, with that said, we're gonna take our 800 grams of lukewarm water here. I'm gonna dump it right into the mixing bowl. Next, we've got 15 grams of just a normal instant yeast. This is actually a pizza crust brand, so a shout out to June and Patrick for letting us borrow this stuff. And we whoop, 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 whoop. Should go great for our pizza video. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, dump that into the water and might as well just go ahead and mix it up a little bit with a spoon just to make sure everything gets all nice incorporated. And the reason why you always want to start with your yeast and your water mixture is because this is how you actually see if your yeast is going to work, if it's alive or not. If nothing foams up, if it doesn't start to kind of activate and eat the water a little bit and start to produce that fermentation and make that alcohol, then you know that it's dead and you're not actually gonna get a rise or any nice awesome air bubbles and you're gonna have a disappointing pizza. And oh, I didn't know that. Disappointing pizza. So yeah. it can go bad. Mm -hmm. It can go bad. Uh, it takes a while. Most yeast that you can get at a store is pretty shelf stable, but you know, you never know. You could have found something that's been in your pantry for like seven years. And cool. That's probably not gonna work. Awesome. So we're just gonna let that sit, let that start to activate a little bit before we start dumping in the rest of our ingredients. Side note, we loved hearing from everybody who tried the gluten-free bread. So if you did try it and didn't let us know, comment that below. And also, if you've ever used this flour before or made gluten-free food and you wanna share your tips, we had some people share tips on YouTube um, who had found our video online and we tried it and it was really great. Our yeast is all good and activated. So now we're gonna go ahead and just add the rest of our ingredients, which is just, uh, we're gonna start with half of the bag here. We're gonna end up using the full thing, but just like last time, we're gonna wanna mix it a little bit first just so flour doesn't go everywhere before adding our salt and our olive oil. So take your bag, cut the top off like we've already done here. And we're just gonna go ahead Right. right about there, okay. Lower your stand mixer, lock it in place, and we're gonna go ahead and start on low. Okay, and so while this is uh, starting up, I'm gonna go ahead and slowly dump in our salt as well, just to make sure that it gets evenly incorporated throughout the, uh, the whole mixture here. It already smells really good. It does smell really good. This Seriously, this flour blend smells so great. Just like why. we're back in Italy. I know. 
Our boys like to sunbathe. You know, they gotta keep their tan going. Ollie needs to work on his a little more than Eddie. So white. Babe, he's like staring me down. Oh, there you go. Now that um, this is all coming together, we're gonna go ahead and dump in the last half of this. Like always, try not to make a mess everywhere, but inevitably fail and make a mess anyways, despite our best efforts. That's what you should not do. Oh, that looks good. Break it down a little bit. Look at that nice carbs. Minus now that we got everything all nice and mixed and all the flour has been incorporated, we're just going to take a spatula. You may want to spray it down with some like cooking spray or rub it with some olive oil or something just because this dough is super sticky. And then we're just going to scrape down the bottom of the mixing bowl here. Kind of form it all into one nice cohesive clump right in the middle. And then we're just going to take a piece of plastic wrap lay it over the top, and then just let it rise for about an hour or so. And then we'll come back and check on it. As you can see, our dough has uh, risen quite a bit, maybe a little bit too much, but no worries. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to take this out of the container, put it in a bowl, deflate it a little bit, and then we're gonna divide it up into some equal portions uh, and wrap those up in some plastic wrap. So what you can do and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one tonight, and then with the other portions, you can have it so that if you're ever hungry or you want a piece of pizza, you have a completely perfectly portioned out pizza-sized dough ball in your fridge or your freezer. Uh, take it out, shape it into a ball, which we're gonna show you how to do, cook it up, and you'll be good to go. All right, All right so we're gonna take this and we're going to dump it into our bowl, which we've got on a scale. Oh my gosh, this stuff is sticky. Um, measured ours out, we have 1,660 grams of dough here. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide it into six balls of around 275 grams. And those are going to be our pizza. Alright, so take some cooking spray or some olive oil and definitely you're going to want to oil up your hands pretty good because this dough is like super, super sticky. And then just start grabbing. The one that we're going to be using to make some pie today, uh, we're going to go ahead and press it out into a pizza. So what I've got here is a Silpat. Um, normally, so here's the thing, with this pizza dough, because there's no gluten, it's really difficult to just kind of pick up and put on a pizza stone, which we have preheated in the oven at 425. Um, it's also difficult to use like a pizza peel and just slide it off onto it without it breaking because there's no gluten to actually strengthen the dough. And also, this dough is super sticky, so it's really difficult to actually slide onto a pizza stone. So my solution for that is- After all of those yeah. negative things. <laughs> so my solution is a Silpat. You can get one of these things uh, super cheap on Amazon. They actually have like an Amazon Basics line. And basically all you need to do is kind of flour it a little bit before, and I'll show you how to do that, press it all out. Then whenever you want to take it to the oven, pick this up and these are heat proof up to 480 degrees. And since we're only cooking at 425, it should work perfectly for us. So that way we don't have to worry about doing all this fantastic work and then breaking our pizza when we're trying to actually cook it. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and prep our work surface. I'm just going to use some generic uh, brand name gluten-free flour blend here for this since uh, this isn't really going to be used in making the dough or anything like that and it's a lot cheaper than trying to open up another bag of the Caputo Fiore glue to do anything. So I've got it here in a little mess strainer. We're just going to get a nice floured surface for us because this dough is super sticky so it's going to want to 
absorb a lot of that. Okay, so we've got our dough ball. Okay, and we're going to just lay it gently in the middle there, coating it with both sides, okay? So now, all we're going to do is just press it out, starting from the, from the center, keeping one hand kind of like to form the circle. You can't press too hard or, or pull too much because, again, with this being gluten-free, there's no actual gluten to keep the bread uh, from ripping. So just keep pressing it out, keeping this one hand here to shape it. You can always kind of pinch things together to give it a little bit more of like a crust. Now that you get your pizza kind of formed in the way that you want it, it's a pretty good size. It's perfect for, you know, splitting with two people by yourself if you're really hungry. Um, you're gonna take some tomato sauce. This is our homemade uh, tomato basil sauce. Again, if you're interested in learning how to uh, use this recipe, just uh, drop a comment and we can show you guys how to make it. It's super simple, super cheap, and super delicious. So, but take your tomato sauce of choice or any sauce of choice for that matter. You can do a barbecue pizza. Alfredo pizza. Like I said, our oven has been preheating with a pizza stone in there at 425 degrees for about an hour. So it's gonna be nice and hot. We're gonna throw this in there and check it again in about uh, 10. It's probably gonna take about 15 minutes, but I wanna check it just to make sure it's not burned. And go get some basil and throw this on here and make it a nice little margarita pizza. All right. Yum! Mmm. That smells really good. Okay, and I'm grabbing basil from our homemade garden or herb garden. It's a little bit dark. Love you. Love you. Well folks, there you have it. That was the much requested gluten-free pizza demo for you guys. Uh, seriously, give it a try. It is the best gluten-free pizza you're ever gonna have in your life. Great crust, great flavor, great texture. Love it. So, go ahead, do us a favor, smash that like button, subscribe, comment down below if you guys try it out. And uh, as always, stay tuned for more BAM vlogs. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.